Welcome to a new episode from the Supply Chain Jedi Master. In 1995, Apple was introducing its new line of Power Mac PCs to be launched just before Christmas. Demand for Power Macs exploded and Apple was caught short for the critical Christmas season. They had $1 billion in unfulfilled orders in its system. Unable to capitalize on the market opportunity, the stock price was soon cut in half. No one could blame Santa for this, as this was a result of a failure in the supply chain management, which I will explain later in this episode. Today, I'm going to explain the supply chain management and highlight the soft drinks model. According to Apex, the Global Association for Supply Chain Management Professionals, a supply chain is a global network used to deliver products and services from raw material to end customers through an engineered flow of information, physical distribution, and cash. We can notice from this definition that there are three entities involved in the supply chain, the supplier, producer, and consumer. In between them, a flow of physical materials and services are moving from supplier up to the consumer. We also notice there is a flow of cash from customer back toward raw material supplier, flow of information back and forth along the chain, and finally the reverse flow of products returned for repairs, recycling and disposal. So what is supply chain management? It is the design, planning, execution, control and monitoring of supply chain activities with the objective of creating net value, building a competitive infrastructure, leveraging logistics, synchronizing supply with demand, and measuring performance globally. To better understand the definition, let's have a look at the soft drinks model. The supply chain is made of several tiers. The soft drink manufacturer's direct supplier is a first tier supplier. For example, the Coke syrup is a mix of flavors. The flavors producer is a second tier supplier, supplying the syrup producer, which is the first tier supplier with flavors, and by turn produces the syrup as his finished product. For the soft drink manufacturer, the syrup is just a raw material. The same applies to the cans from aluminum, glass bottles from sand, and sugar from the king. The manufacturer receives all raw materials from his first tier suppliers, mixes it with water and CO2 to produce his soft drink, then stores it in his warehouse, then distributes it to the first tier customers, like retail shops, wholesalers, and vending machines. From there, the soft drink or the finished product is purchased and consumed by the second tier customers like you and me. You might be wondering, why the manufacturer is concerned about second tier supplier? The answer is first to ensure the sustainability of raw material flow and eventually his soft drink production flow. Second, for the quality and safety of the manufacturer's finished product and accordingly the safety of the customer. We all know bad input, bad output. Third, to avoid legality issues like anti-bribery rules. Last point is social responsibility. For example, to make sure that no child labor is involved in the supply chain. Without proper supply chain management, any break can happen anywhere in the chain, which will affect the rest of the process and will result in customer dissatisfaction, whether by supply shortage or bad quality product. Back to Apple's story. In 1993, Apple was burned by excess inventories and production capacity during a similar launch for its PowerBook. So in 1995, it played things very conservative, as the forecasts were too low. And when they tried to quickly adapt, there wasn't enough flexibility in the supply chain, and some parts suppliers developed additional delivery issues. Due to share value crashing, the CEO was shown the door. Shareholder lawsuits came pouring in, and Apple's market position in PCs took a permanent hit. Watch the forecast episode to learn more. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe to the channel. My name is Usama Talat, we shall meet in another video.